I'm surrounded by cameras. Does it get any better than this? Surrounded by cameras and windows. Okay. I'm Don Pettit. I'm on the International Space Station. And this is the cupola, a module that's filled with windows that we use to look at Earth and our solar system. Soon, there's going to be a transit of Venus across the disk of the sun. This is where Venus moves across the disk of the sun and in the process of doing this will be tangent to the surface of the sun in four locations. And these are called contacts. And the timing of these contacts turns out to have historical significance. In the 18th and 19th centuries, people knew, astronomers knew, all the relative distances between the planets, but they had no measure of the absolute distance. And Halley had worked out the mathematics of the transit of Venus from the four contact points as Venus transits across the Sun. And from these points, you could determine what the distance between the Earth and the Sun was. And once you know that distance, then you can unravel all the other distances in our solar system. So the transit of Venus during the 18th century was the Rosetta Stone for the map of our solar system. Which, interesting, it was before the Rosetta Stone was discovered. So maybe the Rosetta Stone should be the transit stone for our solar system. Countries who wanted to partake in the current age of exploration for that day sent scientific expeditions to the Pacific in order to view the transit of Venus in 1769. And Cook was one with a British expedition. Gentile was another with a French expedition. And these expeditions took many years, were long and hard, and they weren't even sure whether they were going to be able to measure the transit because of clouds which is something we don't have to worry about on the space station because we are above the clouds. We don't need to worry about whether the sun is obscured by clouds. We might need to worry about whether the sun is obscured by a piece of space station structure, but not by clouds. Gentile was gone 11 years, and when he finally returned to France, he found out that he had been declared dead by his family, and his relatives had divided his estate. And hopefully I don't have to worry about that when I return to Earth. Such were the sacrifices that scientists made during that day. Now we're on the space station. We can do the transit of Venus relatively easy. And this is something that I'm going to try to make measurements of from our orbital vantage point outside of Earth's atmosphere. When you look at the transit of Venus, at these contact points, and that's if you got the solar disk here, and here comes Venus, and it comes around, and right where it's tangent to the surface of the sun, that's a contact. Turns out there's atmospheric effects that 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 uh, add uh, that add uh, uncertainty to the time measurement, and these atmospheric effects come from both Earth's atmosphere and the atmosphere of Venus, and if I can be successful at collecting these contact times from space station, we'll be able to remove at least one of the atmospheric effects from these contact points. Now, the transit of Venus today is more of a historic event rather than a leading scientific edge event. It's good for education. It's good for awareness of astronomy and celestial events. We already know what the distances are in our solar system. We've measured them several different ways and they are known in some cases down to centimeters. And so the significance of doing a transit of Venus measurement today is not in the same category as it was in the 18th century. However, 
being able to make this observation outside of Earth's atmosphere may shine some small light onto the optical phenomenon that occurs during the transit of Venus when you look at both Earth and Venus atmospheric effects. I don't know whether I'm going to be successful at doing this. We will see. The answers are not in the back of the book and that's what makes doing scientific research so fascinating. This is going to be the camera system that I'm going to use for the transit of Venus. It's a 800 millimeter telephoto lens with a full aperture solar filter so I can safely look at the sun through this lens system without doing eye damage and I can take pictures uh, during the event. I'll also be wearing sunglasses just in case a little glimpse of the sun uh, shines around the edge of the camera and I will be making the images from the cupola here for scientific purposes today the transit of Venus is more of an educational opportunity to look at celestial events and learn and be delighted about how our solar system and the dynamics of the planets operate the scientific importance of the transit of Venus is not what it was during the 18th century however there is value in continuing to make these measurements because there's more detailed observations that can be made that may add some value uh, and may advance uh, what our knowledge is. So here I am in the cupola, seven windows, I've got seven cameras, eight cameras actually. It doesn't get any better than this if you are an amateur astronomer, if you are a person that likes to make images of Earth and the near Earth vicinity, this is the place to be on the International Space Station. Okay, I've babbled enough.